Hey everybody and welcome back to Linear Algebra with me. Um, today we're going to work on finding a less tedious way to determine if A is invertible because we get so many cool properties when we have A is invertible. But finding out if A is invertible is kind of a pain right now. So first off I want you guys to recall on your homework, I believe homework two, you guys um, found out for a two by two matrix it would be invertible if something called the determinant which was this a d minus b c thing was non-zero as long as it wasn't zero then you would use it to calculate the determinant and so is there such an easy way for us to determine if a is um, invertible but without trying to go through is there a unique solution and yes we can do determinants for bigger matrices we just haven't done it yet. So that is our goal for right now is defining determinants for larger matrices. We're not going to get too crazy. We're just going to go up by one. We're doing a three by three first. So we've got A and we're going to say that it's got the entries A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And we want to define the determinant of A by using um, what we know about determinants of two by two matrices. So notice we've got A, and then we've got the determinant of EF HI, and then we subtract off the B times the determinant of DF GI, plus C times the determinant of DE GH. So the question is, how in the heck are you supposed to remember this? Do I really expect you to memorize that? And what happens when we get to four by four that just seems like craziness to try and remember. Don't worry. Um, yes, it is insane to remember. So the way we're going to think of it is um, you want to go across the top row. So first thing to remember is top row, which was A, B, C turns into this plus minus plus because we had plus A minus B plus C. That's what I mean by plus minus plus. Okay, and then in order to remember what you're gonna multiply by, you cross out the row and column that your entry is in and find the determinant of the, we're going to say quotes, leftover matrix. Okay, so for instance, when we did A times the determinant, A is sitting right here. We cross out the row he's in and the column he's in, and then this leftover matrix is what we took the determinant of. Okay, so let's go through an example. Example one, we're going to find the determinant for A where the entries are just one through nine. So the way that is going to look in action is I say debt A and then I'm going to go after 1. So I do 1 times the determinant and I cross out his column and row. So that means I have 5, 6, 8, 9 left over. And then I've got that plus minus pattern. So minus the next entry was 2 and then I've got determinant of and then cross out twos column and row four seven six nine plus three cross those out and we've got determinant four five seven eight and then the determinant for um the two by two is so you haven't seen me do this it's always you go across with a plus so that's going to be five times nine 
And then when you come back up, you do minus 8 times 6. So that's 1, 5 times 9 minus 8 times 6. Then minus 2 times, so that's 4 times 9, not, not 49, 4 times 9, ah, oh, minus, and then you come back up, 7 times 6, plus 3 times, 4 times 8, and then when we come back up, we do minus 7 times 5. Okay. So now all we have to do is compute some numbers. That's going to be 45 minus 48 minus 2 times 36 minus 42 plus 3, 32 minus 35. That's a negative 3 minus 2 times negative 6 plus 3 times negative 3, negative 3 plus 12 minus 9, 0. That was a lot of work to get 0, guys. Um, okay, so how do we get determinants for bigger matrices? We're going to play the same game. So we had for the 3 by 3, we did um, alternating sum of 2 by 2 determinants. So same game, but now we have a 4 by 4. And so we're going to do alternating sum of 3 by 3 determinants. Let me show you. Determinants is one of those things that's really bad as a formula, but not so bad at watching it live. So I apologize if my word explanations are like, huh? Hopefully it makes it sense when you're looking at it in motion. Okay, so same thing. We've got this plus minus plus thing, alternating signs across the top. So we've got five. That's going to be our first one. Five. Cross out his row and column, determinant of what's left. Okay, and then next we have negative 7. So minus negative 7, determinant of what's left when we cross out. And then we're at 2, so we're at a plus again, so plus 2 determinant of, cross those out, 0, negative 5, 0, 3, negative 8, 5, there we go, and then we're back at minus, and for that 2, so minus 2 determinant of what's left. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and find the determinant for each of these three by threes and then plug them in so that it's hopefully less messy that way. So determinant of the first one which was 3, negative 8, 5, 0, 0, 0, negative 4, 3, negative 6. So that's going to be 3, and then you have the determinant of cross out, ooh, there we go, cross out, cross out. So that's 0 times negative 6, so 0. And then we come back up and do minus 0 times 3, which is 0. Okay. So I did the determinant of the 2 by 2 in this step. Here, I'm going to write my signs to keep myself straight. 
So the next one is going to be minus zero times a determinant, which I don't care about because it's times zero. So you would have whatever's left over in your determinant, but I don't care because it was a zero. Okay. And then now we're back at plus negative four. I'm gonna cross out those guys, and we have negative eight times zero, which is zero, right? And then we come back up and we do five times zero, so minus zero. There we go. So, well, that was zero. Okay, cool. And then we've got the next determinant. That was determinant of zero, negative five, zero, 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 negative four, three, negative six. Okay. So then once again, plus, minus, plus. So zero times the determinant that is left over, but I don't care because that it's already got a times zero on it, minus zero, and then I don't really care about this leftover determinant because it's zero, and then plus, and I finally care because I've got a negative four. So we cross out, cross out, and that's gonna be negative five times zero, right, coming across, and then you come back up, minus zero. I always keep that minus sign on my zeros because like here and here just to keep myself straight with signs because with determinants what we're going to see in a minute is it's basically all about signs okay so that determinant was also zero and then we've got determinant and we've got the next one was zero negative five zero three eight, negative, sorry, negative eight, five, negative four, three, negative six. Okay, so zero minus three determinant, oh, I'm not going to write it up. I'm going to be lazy. So three. So that's going to be negative five and six. So negative five negative six, then we come back up, zero times three, minus zero. Okay, so that was him, and then we do plus a negative four, like that, and then negative five times five, and then we come back up, zero times negative eight, minus zero. Okay. So we had something survive. Goodness. So negative three times, negative five times, nine. that's nine, negative 90. And then that's going to be, that's 100. Okay. The last three by three. Whew. So we've got zero, negative five, zero, three, negative eight, five, zero, zero. So that's gonna be a zero times a determinant that we don't care about, minus three, and I do care about that determinant. So that's gonna be negative five times zero minus Zero times a zero. Okay. And then plus a zero times a determinant. All right, that was another zero. Cool. So going back to the determinant of A, we had five times that first determinant up here. So five times zero. And then it was minus seven times that determinant, which was also zero. Plus two times 
this determinant, which I'll finish that. That's a 10. There we go. And then minus 2 times this last determinant, which was 0. So all in all, we end up with 20. Okay, so this isn't entirely not tedious, like I promised earlier. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this process, but we're going to be clever about it. What this is going to be called is cofactor expansion. Um, honestly, I didn't remember it was called cofactor expansion. I was just like, yeah, that's just how you do determinants. What are you talking about? Um, no, it's actually a specific method of finding the determinant. So big idea, we can calculate determinants by expanding across any row or down any column, so long as we keep our signs right. So what that means is I went across the top row. I did not have to. The signs, so remember for the top row, I said it alternates. You do this plus minus plus minus thing. Well, it does that everywhere. So as long as you have your signs correct, so when you go down, it needs to alternate as well. They're going to form this little checkerboard sort of pattern. We're going to use this to expand, but not along necessarily the top row. We're going to be clever and go after things that are easier. So just as a note, there is a formula for cofactor expansion. It is given in the book. I do not think it's worth the brain cells it takes to memorize. I am not a fan of memorizing. <laughs> And I don't even really, as a mathematician, I look at that and I'm like, yeah. So I wouldn't recommend investing too much time in looking at it. Okay. So let's see what cofactor expansion looks like in motion. It's another one of those things that I feel like makes sense as long as you've seen it move. Gonna find the determinant of A, but same A as before. We're gonna do it more cleverly. That's a word now. See this guy that has all the zeros? We're going to expand by going down the column. And what I mean by that is determinant of A equals, and I'm going to put some plus, minus, plus, minus signs on. So instead of starting here at 5, since I want to go down the column, I'm going to start at 2, which has a positive sign. Otherwise, I would have written a negative 2. So here we go. Going down that column, I'm going to have 2 times the determinant of what is left over. 0, negative 5, 0, 3, negative 8, 5, negative 4. 4, 3, negative 6. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And then now we're going to go after the next one. Well, remember to keep alternating your signs. So that one, 2 is a plus, so 0 is a minus. And then I could write out determinant of what's left over, but it's times 0, so I don't care. And then the next one, so this 0, he's going to be alternating the sign makes it a plus zero and then again I don't care about the determinant that's being multiplied against and then the very last one is minus zero so there we go now we only have to do the uh, determinant of one three by three and isn't that nice and you know what the cleverness doesn't stop there we're going to go along column number one instead of going along the top, because this works for all matrices, not just the 4 by 4s This also can work for the 3 by 3 So instead of going through 0, 3, and negative 4, I'm going to go 0, negative 5, 0, because I like zeros. Let's multiply by some zeros. Okay, so 2, and then that's going to be plus, minus, plus, also... Um, eh, maybe I'll do it in a different color, that way it pops out. 
So plus, minus, plus, and then this was would be plus, minus, plus if you go down. Okay, there we go. So we have a plus zero, and then we could cross out the, deter the row and column, find the determinant of what's left over, but it's times zero, so we don't care. And then that's going to be minus negative five times the determinant of, well, now we care. So that's going to be crossed out, and that's going to be crossed out. So you have a three times a negative six, right? Three times negative six minus, and then we go back up, five times a negative four. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And then we do the last zero right there. So that's a plus zero times a determinant we don't care about. So two, um, that's gonna be a times five, and then that's a negative 18 plus 20, there we go. 2 times 5 times 2. 20! Okay, that was much less effort on our part than the previous method of only sticking towards the top. Okay. Hopefully we feel good about that. So, lemma number one. We've got a matrix with a row or column of zeros has a determinant of zero. Um, if you didn't notice, like everything went to zero when we used column number three, because the only thing that survived was that two, because the two was non-zero. So if the two had also been a zero, then all we would have gotten was zeros for that column. So we're gonna say proof in quotes. Our wavy hand explanation is do cofactor expansion by expanding across slash down the row or is it column of zeros. There you go. And then if you just expand using the zero row or column, whatever you have, you end up with zeros in front of all of your determinants. Okay, so that's fun. Now we're gonna do a determinant again for a five by five, um, just to get some more practice in. But let's take this for a run. We've got the determinant of A is gonna be equal to, and I'm going to use that guy to do our cofactor expansion. So that's gonna be a plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and hopefully it's obvious to you why I want to do that one. It has zeros and it has lots of them. Okay, so it's gonna be four times the determinant of whatever's left over when I cross stuff off. So that's two, zero, 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 negative one, negative one, zero, zero, eight, zero, three, zero, eight, four, seven, negative five. Okay. And then once again, I am going to do column number one for my determinant. So this is going to be four times, and then it's two times the determinant of whatever is left over when I cross his rows and columns out. So that would be negative one, zero, 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 three, zero, four, seven, negative five. Okay. And then once again, determinant, 
for the three by three, we're gonna go after column number one because I really like capitalizing on this whole zero thing. So it's gonna be four times two times negative one. And the determinant of the two by two, which is gonna be three times negative five minus zero times seven. Okay, great. Three times negative five, zero times seven. Okay, there we go. We are all done with doing determinants. Now we just have to multiply this out, which I'm gonna write it as a string. And I want you guys to notice that four, two, one, three, negative five, we're exactly, oops, not there. It's exactly the main diagonal for A. Okay. If we multiply it out, we get 120, and that is what they were asking us to do. Um, and now we're gonna talk about why that happened or not why necessarily, I think you see why it happened. All these zeros that kept coming into our cofactor expansions kept giving us, um, you know, zeros everywhere we didn't have the main diagonal. And it is a special case. We actually have a name for the kind of matrix that was. It is called a triangular matrix. And you have triangular matrices are square matrices where all the entries below or above the main diagonal are zero. And we call them upper triangular matrices when you have below is the zeros and then lower triangle matrices when you have zeros above. And you're like, oh, that kind of doesn't make sense in words because I said when I was talking below, then I said it was upper. Let me show you real fast. So if all the zeros are below the main diagonal, it looks like this. There we go. So the zeros are below the main diagonal, which means everything you care about is up top. So this would be an upper triangular matrix. And then lower looks like this. There we go. Zero is above the main diagonal, which makes all of the interesting stuff below it. There we go. So upper, lower, and then just as we saw, if A is a triangular matrix, then the determinant of A is the product of the entries along the main diagonal. Okay. So that takes us through calculating determinants. Um, I promised that we were finding a less tedious way to, cal to figure out if A was an inverse, and we are just, you have to go to the next section to get um, why determinants are gonna help us determine if A inverse is a thing or not. But now that we have determinants, we're pretty much ready. We're really close. So I'll see you guys next time.